Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rakesh Gupta. I am a Salesforce MVP, author and blogger at AutomationChampion.com. I write blog posts and create videos on Salesforce Flow, Process Builder, Lightning Experience, Salesforce Release, Pardot and Apex. So if you want to learn this concept, please do subscribe my YouTube channel and visit my website AutomationChampion.com. In this video, I will show you how you can create a flow with time-dependent action. This is a newly introduced feature in Spring 21. If you haven't get a chance to review Spring 21 release notes, you can find a comprehensive summary of the Spring 21 release on my website automationchampion.com. I will drop the blog post link in the description section of this video. Let's jump to the next slide agenda. So first we will discuss what is the blog uh, or video idea, why I created a video on this topic then we will discuss what are the few things you will understand or learn after watching this video then we will discuss the business use case then we will discuss what are the few things you have to understand before creating a flow for this scenario or this use case like process flow diagram what object you are going to touch and other information then we will together develop this automation in salesforce then we will test it and then summarize what are the few things you learn and how you're going to use this in upcoming flow which you're going to create maybe in the future. So blog idea. So first is how do you provide an ability to your user to auto follow new users in Chatter? Like your company is using Chatter for improve the collaboration. Now anytime a system administrator create a new user you want to provide an ability to your users so that they can opt in for auto follow new users. So, and there is a no out of the box future for this. One. So when you create a new user, every user has to manually follow them. So we will create an automations and provide an ability and option to our existing user so that they can opt in like other opt-in options like do you want to receive the chatter weekly digest likewise we will provide the features to them so they can select if they want to opt in to follow any new users which system administrator is going to create in the future objectives understand what is the dml operations and how you can avoid it how you can add time dependent actions in after save record trigger flow how do you use uh, loops to work with multiple records then what is the bulk save flow and how you can create a flow which take many dml operations and we'll show you how you can monitor the time-based flow queue. Here is the business use case. Take a time, review it first and understand what we are going to create. So the scenario is Warren Mason is working as a system administrator and he received a following requirement. Business wants to provide an option to their users so that they can automatically follow new users in Salesforce. And they also want to make sure that this is an optional feature. They don't want to force this feature to every user. Now, the approach that I usually do to before building any flow is gather the ingredients. Understand how you want to mix those ingredients and prepare your food. Similar concept apply here. So first, this problem can be solved using Apex or any other things in Salesforce, but we will use after save record trigger flow. Why after save? Because we are going to create a record in an object which is called entity subscription. So when you want to follow some users or follow a record, you are going to create a new entry in the entity subscription object, which we are going to do in the Salesforce flow in a few minutes. So as you want to create a record in the related objects, so you have to use after save. If you want to work on the same object and you don't need ID, like you want to, let's say that you created a flow on account and you want to update account fields, then you can use before save. But you are working on account, your trigger started on account and you want to update the related object like opportunity or you want to create a new task, then you have to use after save record trigger flow. I have written an article when to use before versus after save. You can find it on my website by visiting automationchampion.com and click on the Salesforce flow and you can when to use before versus after save record trigger flow. I will drop the link of this article in the description section of this video. Let's discuss mixed DML operations. So what is the mixed DML operations? 
So in Salesforce, we have two type of object. One each call is setup object, another each call is non setup object. A setup object is any object related to user or user roles and other object. There is a setup object. I will also drop the link of the setup object of the Salesforce help articles. Non setup object like account, collaboration group member, contact, or any custom object. Those are called as non setup objects. So now, if you perform an operation on the setup object, you cannot perform a DML operation on the non setup object in the same transaction. It means same transaction. If you perform these two operations, like you are creating a user and you are also updating an account, then this create a problem that is called a mixed DML operations. Now to avoid it, let's say that when system administrator create a user, you want to add that user into a chatter group or public groups. So in such cases, you want to perform this operation in the same transaction. But if you do that, you will receive a mixed DML operation. So to avoid it, usually what we do is to separate the transaction. So to separate the transactions, we will use time-based action in the flow. So that is all about mixed email operations. Now, let's take a moment and review the process flow diagram and try to understand this. This is very important. I strongly recommend everyone before creating a flow, have a process flow diagram. Either you can use paper and pen, lucid chart or any tools that you would like. Use it and think through. If now we want to create a record trigger flow, which will start after save on the user creation. And it will check, is it active? Yes. Then we want to wait zero hours. Before that, we have to create a custom fails college follow new users on the user object, which allow any users to opt in if they want to follow new users. Now, if, if you look at the steps, find users who opted for the follow new users. Here we will use a get record element and find all the users who have selected the checkbox. Once we find it, maybe we can have one or many i don't we don't know how many user opt in so you have the list of user as it is the list so you cannot directly work with you have to extract the record from the list and you start looking at one record at a time so that's why we have to use the loop element we will extract the record from the collection and then start mapping into the entity subscription and once it's done we will add into the record collection uh, record collection variable and at the end, we will do the insert operations, which is if you have 50, 60 user follow, it will only take one DML rather than having five DML operations. With that said, take a moment, review everything. If you have any questions, please drop your question in the comment section of this video, and I will try to answer as soon as. If not, then let's jump into the Salesforce org and start building the automation. All right, the pin Salesforce is to create a checkbox field on user object, which allow users to opt in if they want to follow new users. For that, in the quick find, type user and select the user object. Then go to the field and relationships. I already created the field in my org, but if you want, just select create a new field and select the checkbox type and make sure that you selected the field level security appropriately. I added this field for grant the field access to every profiles, but feel free to modify it as per your business requirement and do write the help text so user can understand what is the purpose of this field. Once done, the next step is to select the follow new user checkbox for few users so that when we will test Salesforce find some users for go to the user edit the user record and make sure that you select the follow new users I already selected for a few users that is the basic setup now the next step is to create a flow to create a flow in the quick find type flows and look for flows and then click on the new flow button which allow you to select what type of flow you want to create is it a screen flow which allow you to take input from users and process it 
or is it a record trigger flow which fire on record create and it or delete or is it a scheduled trigger flow which automatically fire at a specified time or is it a platform event which execute when platform messages received or auto launch flow which you want to launch from a process builder fx or api so in our case it is the record trigger flow because we want to create an automation when user is created so let's select the record trigger flow and click on the next then salesforce allow you to select what kind of layout you want to use a free form or auto layout auto layout has some advantage which automatically position all the element on the canvas and connect feel free to use one of them i'm going to use free form next you have to select the start element so click on the edit and make sure that you selected right option here when you want to execute this flow so in our case when the user is created only on the creation so select this and when run the flow so after record is saved as we are going to insert a record in the entity subscription object so select this option and click on the done now choose object which object so it means you have to select when the flow execute which record you create so flow will fire for an example did it fire on the account creations or opportunity creations so in this case it is the user do you have any filter conditions yes so is it is active equals to true we just want to make sure that user is active when it's created feel free to write any conditions here was done the so next step is add schedule path which allow you to add a time dependent actions basically you say okay i want to fire an actions after 10 days of opportunity is closed or after 10 days of user is created you can do that by adding a schedule path here to so click on it and then you can give the path name which is i am going to write type add zero hour which field you want to use as a relative field so uh, select create a date and then offset is take the full number zero hours after created so we say that wait zero hour after record is created you can have as many as scheduled path i don't remember the limits on this one feel free to check salesforce help articles for the limit number of schedule path you can add so now you can say okay so let's say wait two hours for example so you can you can have multiple options available and that's it that run immediately so let's leave this here it does not harm if you have multiple now the next step is we want to find all the users who opted to follow new users so for that we will use get record element get record element is equivalent to sql query in apex it allow you to write a query declaratively and salesforce will find the record for you so i am going to type find opted users as a label and which object user object what is the conditions condition is follow new follow new users fill equals to true and i am also going to type here id does not equals to the user which system administrator just created just to make sure that salesforce is not fetching the same id because the i cannot follow myself on the chatter so it apply to this newly created user as well so he cannot follow himself on the chatter so for this what's done how many record select all record because you don't know whether it is one record or multiple it means might be possible there are only one users selected the checkbox or multiple we don't know so select all record once done connect these two so once you connect here you will see a pop up so in this case zero hours but if you want to say for an example uh, i just copy paste here and you can say okay let's say that i want to fire this immediately and this after two hours yes that is possible but in our case this two does not make any sense but if you have any requirement feel free to use i'm going to delete this so once you find the user the next step is to validate whether the get record element 
is able to find any users. For this, we will use decision element and give the label yes. Means the record collection variables is null false. It means if it's not null, it means get record element was able to find the users. Next, we will use the loop element. Why? Because loop element is used to extract the record from the collection. So this is the collections and once the record are in the collections, it is not possible to use those records. You have to extract them and then you can write your logic. So once you add the loop element, Salesforce will automatically create a record variable. So you can see current item from loop. Now once we have the record variables here, you can able to write your logic. Let's say that create element and say add followers. Now we don't have any record variables, so I can select separate resources, which object entity subscription. Now entity subscription take two parameters, parent ID and subscriber ID. Parent ID to whom you want to follow, which you will get it from the rec dollar record ID. Who is going to follow subscriber? So subscriber is current item dot ID. That's all. So this you can connect this loop here and loop back. So this is fastest way to do that. But there is one problem here. This will work if you have record less than 150 in the loop. But what happens if you have more? Then it will create a problem because this create record file for each item in the loop. So that is not a best practice. So try to avoid it if, if, if possible. So what are the other options? We will use assignment element and we will assign our values to a record variables and then we will add all the record variables into a record collections variable and at the end of the loop we will insert data from the record collection variable into Salesforce. So how do we do that? So first create two variables. One is called as record variables of type entity subscription. So you have to always create two variables in most of the scenarios. So variable entity entity subscription. So don't select multiple here. So this is the record variables which use to store only one record at a time. We will also create another variables of type entity subscription and select multiple values. So this is going to use to store multiple records. Now you see, I have a naming convention for variables. So I take first three character of resource type, one character for data type and the name. Now, once we have the uh, variables created, what we will do is we will use assignment element. Assignment element is used to assign values. So in this record variables, we will assign the value to the subscriber ID as well as parent ID. It's the same as what we have done in the create record element, but we are not inserting it is just mapping right now. So who is going to subscribe? The reuser which we are getting from the loop ID. And here record the user which system administrator just created. Now if you uh, let me explain again why I use the loop. So if I go here, you can see no option to create, uh, sorry, use record collection variable, which we find from the find record at the very first step. So that's why we have to use loop to extract the data and then give you the one record at a time, which you are going to use in the logic. Very simple. Sorry. And the name, so I can say add follower. Now we map the value, but still we are not going to insert right now because we are still inside the loop. So for this, what we will do, we will use one more assignment here and say add into collection. 
and this time we created a record collection value well you can see the where our entity subscription which is with us and you can say inside record collection variable we are adding all of our s object or record variables into this one into the collection basically so what Salesforce will do, loop will give one record, it will go and map the value here and then add record into this collection. So loop will do the same, follow the same process for multiple records. So once you are done with the loop, the final stage is insert the record. So I say insert followers and we have multiple. Which collection we are going to use? This one, entity subscriptions, because in here we are using entity subscription. So now you can connect this one. So this is the best practice when you work with the bulk records and make sure that you do not perform any DML operations inside the loop, which is create, update, delete, and get element. Once done, save this. Save that auto follow new users. Same. And make sure that this is active. So this is all about the flow for this scenario. So once done, the next step is to test it. So how we are going to test it and what is the way you can monitor the time dependent actions which we already added to the flow. All right, so let's create a new user. and select the license type, Salesforce platform, you can select any other license type and click on the save. Now quickly jump back to the time based workflow queue. All right, so you can see here the time based action. So wait for it and once it get removed from here, means Salesforce process this action Now go to the people tab in Salesforce and look for user Ram Singh and once you see the followers there are three followers Chatter Expert, Jason Smith and Rakesh Gupta. So that's all for the proof of concept. So what we learned today. First you can use time dependent actions to avoid mixed DML operation error in Salesforce. So, so you know what is the mixed DML operation now and how to avoid it. So if you want to separate the transaction, use time dependent action in the flow. Second, you can add time dependent actions in the flow to execute a path at a specified time for an example. One path execute immediately, another path execute after five days. And how to create a flow which is bulk safe. So don't perform any DML operation inside the loop. Better use assignment element and add everything in the collection and at the end insert the record. With that said, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel, like this video and share this video.